Greetings, YouTubers. I am Rick, the tech enthusiast here with the next Elegoo lesson, number 26, Photocell. In this lesson, we'll take a look at the Photocell or photo resistor that's provided in the kit and add to lesson 24 circuit to demonstrate the functionality. So let's start building. The Photocell or photo resistor that is included in the kit is a light dependent resistor or LDR. And as the name suggests, the resistance varies with light. And this resistance is directly and inversely proportional to the amount of light falling on the device. In other words, the LDR resistance is the least in bright light and the greatest in complete darkness. A simple diagram illustrates the LDR components. Two electrodes are placed on a ceramic surface with two wire terminals that are cold welded to them. The electrodes have what look like fingers to increase the overall electrode surface area. Then a thin resin coating of photo semiconductive material is filled in. More or less what happens at the subatomic level is that light photons excite the semiconductive material allowing electrons to flow. The more photons, the more electrons can flow and the less apparent resistance is across the electrodes. In this lesson, we'll add to the circuit from lesson 24. A link to lesson 24 will be in the show notes below. A photocell will be connected in series with a fixed value resistor. The total voltage will be divided across each device. So as the photocell resistance increases, the voltage measured across the 1K resistor will be reduced. And under bright light conditions, the photocell resistance decreases and the voltage measured across the resistor increases. The tutorial and the data sheet have additional information on the photocell or photoresistor, so be sure to check them out. For this lesson, you'll need the following items from your kit. The Elgo Uno R3 board, the Ceni 4 HC 595 shift register IC, eight LEDs, two blue, two yellow, two red, and two green, eight 220 ohm resistors, a 1K ohm resistor, the photo resistor or photo cell, a breadboard, and a bunch of male to male jumper wires. Most of the components were used in lesson 24. So really the only change here was the one kilo ohm resistor and the photo resistor or photo cell and perhaps a jumper or two. On page 177, you'll see the following schematic. And here's my version. You can see that the photoresistor is connected in series with a one kilo ohm resistor from power to ground. A connection is made between the two devices to pin A0. On page 178, you'll see the wiring diagram with a photo on page 179. And here's my wiring diagram. Again, the photoresistor is connected to the power on one side and the one kilo ohm resistor to ground on the other. I'll use a couple of small pre-made jumpers from the divider point to the one side of the breadboard and a male to male jumper to A0. Okay, let's jump to the code. As before, we'll load the recommended sketch provided in the tutorial. Go to the file menu item, select open, and browse to where you save the Elegoo files. Then under your language, code, under Lesson 26 Photocell, under Photocell, and open the photocell.ino file. This is almost identical to Lesson 24's tutorial sketch, so let's just cover the changes. The first change is the new integer light pin, which is set to zero or A0. The previous delay variable is now gone. Otherwise, the other variables are mostly the same. The variable LEDs is now an integer, even though a byte would have worked fine here. The void setup is the same, so we'll just continue on. The function void update shift register is also the same, so on to the void loop. 
The boy loop starts by performing an analog read of the light pin to the local integer variable reading. Now let's recall what the maximum analog value returned by the analog pin is, and that value is 1023. To approximate the steps for each LED, the tutorial divides the 1023 value by 2 and then by 9. I'm not really sure why they chose 9 rather than 8, but we'll just go with it. Rounding up, we get the value of 57. That reading value is then divided by 57 and assigned to another local variable, num LEDs lit. The next line checks the num LEDs lit variable, and if it's greater than 8, it sets that num LEDs lit variable to a value of 8. Then the variable's LEDs is set to 0. Recall that the LEDs variable will be handled as a byte, with each bit identifying each LED to be turned on or off. The for loop loops through the num LEDs lit value, each time adding a bit value left shifted over by the amount determined by the I value. When done, the LEDs variable will contain the bit values for all the LEDs to be turned on. Finally, the update shift register function is called, and if you recall, it will take the global variable LEDs value and shift out the bits to the register, turning on the appropriate number of LEDs determined before. Okay, let's upload the code and try it out. So as you can see here, we have the same or very similar circuit to lesson 24. We have the 748C595 shift register and its outputs connected to the series connected resistor and LED combos with the array of different LEDs. And then we have the outputs of the Arduino going to the serial input, the latch, latching clock, and the register clock right here. Of course, we have power and ground, but this time we have from the A0 pin, the analog input that's connected between the photo resistor and the one kilo ohm fixed resistor. There's a power connection from the power rail jumping over to the top of the photo resistor, photo resistor or photo cell. Um, and then that connects to this uh, fixed resistor that is hard to see, but it's connected to the negative power rail on the bottom of this board. And as you can see, the light intensity is shown right here with these LEDs. And if I uh, cover those, you can see it kind of goes down. So I'm able to use this uh, dark little cup here. I can see it's nice and dark. And it's brighter or it changes with the different intensities. And if I use a flashlight, you can see, oh yeah, that's nice and bright. That works pretty slick. Very neat. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little about the photocell or the photoresistor. If you like this sketch, be sure to let me know in the comment section below. I'll have additional links for other interesting videos and code for this project in the show notes below. Join me next time for lesson 27, 74HC 595 and the segment display. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks and see you next time.